the Star Spangled Banner announces Uncle Sam's presence in Kosovo. The USA's military machine has been rolling here since June 1999, when NATO sent in K-4, the Kosovo force, on a peacekeeping mission. This Black Hawk helicopter is on a rescue drill. Troops at the Bonsteel camp in southeast Kosovo train for maneuvers. This is the logistics base of the K-4 Multinational Brigade East. The 20 different units in seven countries which make up the Falcon Task Force are led by the Americans. Captain Laurent Doan is just one of 3,300 American soldiers at Camp Bonsteel. The camp is proudly named after James Bonsteel, a Vietnam War hero and role model for the American K-4 troops. The task force, Falcon's mission, is to conduct peace support for the operations and maintain a safe and secure environment until K-4 forces are able to withdraw. The camp itself covers some 360,000 square meters near the town of Berizaj Orosovic in Serbia. The American army claims to have invested around $130 million here, handing back responsibility to the appropriate civil organizations when they leave is a priority. But for the moment, much of the infrastructure is missing. The whole area has been under reconstruction since last January. Hundreds of Kosovars have been seeking work on the building sites. The deployment of the security force coincided with the withdrawal of Serbian troops. Americans now guard the war machinery left behind by the Serbs in Kosovo. In November 1999, the president and commander-in-chief visited the boys in the camp. Clinton came with a clear message. We have won the war, but the Kosovars alone can win peace. His troops are there to make this task easier. Hello. Hello! The most important thing you can do, besides keeping these people alive and having security, is to teach that to the children and to their parents by the power of your example and your own testimony. Hidden in Kosovo's deepest ravines on the Macedonian border is the Shabu family's simple home. The Stars and Stripes flutters outside the door. The family was driven out by the Serbs and the Americans rescued them. Yet one American from Camp Bonstil has also single-handedly torn their lives apart. He was the rapist and murderer of their 11-year-old daughter, Marita. The oldest sister is still clearly in a state of shock. After everything that happened, the Americans came to me and promised me all kinds of help. They kept asking us what they could do for us. We're still in touch with the Americans and NATO. The horrific crime was committed in January in the little town of Vitina. 11-year-old Marita was buried in the local cemetery. An American soldier has killed my child, yet the Americans have liberated us. It doesn't make sense. The American army still patrols Vitina today. We ask the soldiers whether they feel unwelcome here now. And you never had a feeling they are hating the Americans now? Or no. Like no, no, that's not the feeling. In fact, we see overwhelming support. Every, Everywhere as we go, there's always people out there, especially the kids, waving to us. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we've got a lot of the confidence of the Albanian people. Uh, I think uh, as each day progresses, we're seeing a lot more confidence from the Serb people. And our goal here is to treat them equally. Hamdi Shabu can't help crying when he shows us his murdered daughter's school bag. Her murderer, Sergeant Rongi, was in prison for life.
The American soldiers sometimes use more intimidation tactics than necessary in their peacekeeping mission. Weapon searches are often carried out with a display of military power and aggression. It's not unusual for the Czechs to lead to sexual harassment, as a devastating internal army report has also concluded. That's our primary job. Day in and day out, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's simply providing a safe and secure environment. But that's not a simple task. That's a tough task. That takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of resources. Um, but that's our primary mission. Everyone in Camp Bonstill is aware of the fact that the troops' reputation has been tarnished by the actions of certain individuals. The combat units have not been trained for police surveillance, and many needed special training for civilian action. The units cover a variety of disciplines, from air defense to field artillery. Yet the challenge facing them is to harness these skills in a humanitarian mission, where refugees have been subjected to horrific violence and human rights abuses. It was uh, good to see that the elections went smoothly. James Nicholson is responsible for the humanitarian efforts of the task force and is glad that the elections in Kosovo went smoothly. It's just one step towards resuming normality after the devastation of the war. Dr. Benita Grove shows us the intensive care station. Fortunately, she does not need to use the two operation rooms today. In the previous week, victims of a road accident were brought in here and an Albanian child accidentally shot by an American soldier died here. A mass casualty um, we could handle four patients at one time. The question remains of how long the Americans will continue to serve in Kosovo, a place many of them had never heard of before their deployment. How, ma how, many, how long will the Americans be here? Till the when the mission's complete and we're told to go. The Falcons of Camp Bonstil will stay on guard in Kosovo until they get their marching orders.